Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Wicked Good Everything. I am your co-host, your co-host with the least most, Dylan. I'm here with my, my pal, my buddy, my, my, my good friend, and soon-to-be co-worker, yes. Brian. What's up? We're, we're soon-to-be back, co-workers. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is kind of like co-workers um, for the internet, but uh, yeah, I'm doing really well. Dylan, how are you doing? I'm doing very, very well, and I... I Kind of talking about what we just discussed. We we have very big news for for this podcast. Yeah, and that is that we're saving up one hundred and fifty dollars to get Gilbert Gottfried to say something about this podcast. Yes. So um, honestly, our PayPal is open. If anyone wants to help us reach our goal of uh, getting Gilbert Gottfried to record something for this podcast on Cameo dot com. Yeah. So I'm scrolling through Cameo right now because we're we're getting big. You know, mm-hmm. we're getting to a, we're getting at least like in the double digits of right. uh, people who listen each week. Yeah, things and are looking up. Let's just say that. To me, Gilbert Gottfried did $150 to get him to say something like, welcome to Wiki Good Everything, or welcome to the reviewers, which, hey, if you're oh, looking hey, at this that, right now. That's also big news, I guess. It may or may not say the reviewers. We don't know, but that is the the tentative T, TBD name of this podcast for mm-hmm. now, which I thought was, it was exciting until we realized when you search it, currently nothing comes up. So hopefully when you're listening to this, that has changed, but... Yeah, I mean, regardless, this episode is going to say the reviewers. The logo yes. on the video, it it's the reviewers. The temporary right. logo, I just, once to more makes a better logo than this that I threw together hastily. You know, we were going we to do the bagel guy getting choked out, but we didn't know if that would hurt us, you know, in terms of monetizing or anything. Didn't want to anger the YouTube gods. Um, also, Dylan... That fucking guy, talk about failing upwards. He's fucking everywhere right now. Have you seen this? Yeah, so I guess he has a YouTube channel. Uh, we're talking about, of course, our, our boy, Bagel Boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not my boy. No. Uh, you know, he's, he we, is a boy. We don't uh, support this man. No, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. But he has, like, a YouTube channel where he, like, purposely, like, picks fights with people mm-hmm. because he's, he's small and all that. So I'm not saying it was a publicity stunt because the the girl who posted it was, like, this random girl on Twitter mm-hmm. who was just trying to get her bagels. And then this dude freaked <laughs> right. out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fuck this dude. PFT from Barstool is, like, Bagel Boss has said that they would sponsor PFT at Rough and Rowdy to fight the Bagel Boss guy. That'd be great. Yeah, so Bagel Boss said that they would pay PFT, and if – he beats him. He he gets a lifetime supply of Bagel Boss, which seems like a fair trade to me. And you get to beat the shit out of some like misogynistic midget. So, yeah, isn't PFT uh, dwarf, pretty dwarf, tall dwarf, too? Whoa, dwarf. Well, Sorry. yeah. Ooh. Dwarf. Ooh. Oof, hot mic. We'll Do you want to uh, re say that line? So I can... no, no, no. I <laughs> just keep that. Keep that in it. Cut it. <laughs> okay. Well, how... Cut it. Cut it, but don't cut it. <laughs> oh man, I'm confused. We'll have to we'll have to figure out what we want exactly. Dylan. Hey, no, P- PFT is a pretty short guy. Oh, okay. I didn't, I yeah. didn't know. Yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, to kind of just get this podcast going, uh, we have three main points. Gilbert Gottfried, mm-hmm. $150. We're going to get him to say something. Mm-hmm. That's that's my new goal for the, like, the next two weeks is I want to save up to get Gilbert Gottfried to say something to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy Dick also, $99. Kind of a steal. There's, there's a couple steals on here, to be quite honest. Yeah, the price. Do the celebrities get to price themselves? Because there's a weird range where it's like, why is that guy that much money? Yeah, it it is weird. Like Bob Mineri, uh, four four hundred forty four dollars. I mean, Colin Mockery, a hundred dollars. That's a, that's another steal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the big the like, kind of the white whale. As I'm scrolling down, though, we got Gary Busey at three hundred fifty dollars. That is oh my god, that is, that is something. <laughs> uh, you got Ron Jeremy, two hundred. Mm-hmm. This is this is an interesting list. This Was is- Brian Callen only a hundred? Come on, man, value yourself. You're a big comedian. You're a big. Uh- <laughs> I wonder how they do this. I wonder if like they just sit like at home and they have just like a microphone and they just record like, "Hey, I'm Gilbert. I'm Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> you listen to Wicked Good Everything." Yeah, I mean, oh my god, I I would imagine they probably don't even have a microphone. They probably do it like on their phone, like on their iPhone. Oh my god, Jose Cinco's on here. Ooh, that's another tempting yeah, there are, one. There are some like wild names, like, mm-hmm. but I guess like if you're doing like if you're doing like like ten or fifteen of these. Day mm-hmm. and taking like what I don't know like uh, what maybe, maybe like an hour out of your time just to say all this shit yeah and like they don't care like like oh like hey that wasn't good but you're gonna argue with Gilbert Gottfried right and said wicked good everything or they're like poorly yeah mm-hmm. like there's I'm I'm kind of surprised at some of the celebrities on here there's some 
some people that might need a little more money than me. Oh my fucking god, the bagel boss guy is on uh, here. Well, of course he's on there. Are you kidding me? Oh my oh man, forty bucks for this scumbag? <laughs> wow. Don't, what, don't I, do it, I, guys. I, I did not expect to see that. <laughs> Chris Morgan, aka Bagel Boss guy. What the fuck? This dude see, I told you, this dude's full of shit. Yeah. And like and like his profile videos of him like fighting a tree. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta send you this. This is this is bad radio, but this is good right. radio. At the same we time. got uh, well, we'll we do that. Uh, we got Jonathan Bennett uh, from Mean what? Girls, and also the first boot of Celebrity Big Brother Two. So that's pretty big. Man, fucking Chris Morgan, aka Bagel Boss. Fuck this dude. Yeah, this guy. I don't know. A... I might give him forty bucks to say something though. <laughs> no, don't 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 give into it. Oh man. All right. Anyway, Gilbert Godfrey, that's that's our babe. That's mm -hmm. who we're going after. Fuck Bagel Boss guy. We're going after Gilbert Godfrey. Love him. Yeah. Love love Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> Tay Diggs really undervaluing himself at fifty dollars. I just want to say that's that. I mean, he must he but he must just like do it. Mm -hmm. Like imagine if you're getting paid like basically fifty dollars a minute, like that that kind of price range. Like and you're just saying like oh like hey hey what's up what's up Ryan like happy birthday or like right. hey welcome we can get everything. Right, that's right. a pretty good gig. Yeah, uh, no, it's really good. My boy Henry Zabrowski, I'll get him just to say like hello to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, man, let's 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 get into some movie talk here. Yeah, we've wasted uh wasted enough time on the on the cameo talk for sure. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, so I mean, we kind of have uh, we're not retracting anything from last week, but I said that the uh, the early reviews for Lion King were were pretty good, and I Ooh, guess that, I guess yeah, we, we thought we thought they were gonna be good, and then holy shit, we were blindsided. Yeah, I, I think I guess somewhere like the tomato score was gonna be ninety two percent, not end up not being uh, anywhere close to that because currently uh, it is certified rotten. Uh, Jesus, is certified rotten. I thought. I thought it would at least be in the 60s, but we're at 56%. That's not great. Six. I mean, I guess, we're still going to cover it, right? Like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, it's – I'm, I'm a little worried about my $2 billion mark, although I still think it's going to make a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. But, the, I mean, the reviews are pretty mixed. Right. Uh, I, I, it seems like the consensus is that the, the technological aspect of it is unbelievable. Right. It's probably going to win a shitload of uh, uh, technical awards at, like, uh, Golden Globes. And the Oscars, but I guess the movie as a whole. I think we said last week there's like a 30 additional minutes from the original Lion King. I guess it's really like, it's just I, I heard bland a lot. Uh, I I've seen I've seen like a leaked uh, scene from the movie and it's Mufasa's death and man, it doesn't look great. Yeah, I saw and that as well. It's he looks like a rag doll just getting like thrown around, which I guess like, I guess might be more scientifically physically accurate <laughs> right but it just looks silly it like it, it just looked funny yeah james uh, l jones voice still awesome still yeah uh, still great choice for the so, i don't know like i'm i i'm i even talked to you about going to the fan event uh which was tonight mm -hmm. but i'm not paying full price for it because we have a list but yeah yeah we're gonna see it. we're gonna we're probably we'll probably just do this next week but i don't know i'm yeah, a little nervous so. i'm a little nervous about my guess at, at i think it'll still beat spider-man so mm -hmm. i think i'll still win between us but right. i mean i i was really confident in two in two million i i thought for sure this was two billion i mean and i thought for sure this was going to be a movie that what was going to be kind of just praised across the board and i guess i don't know i guess i guess it shows i mean it has a higher rating than Aladdin right now and you and you're the, you've been preaching how good aladdin is I mean, I enjoyed Aladdin. I don't, I don't know what most regular audience goers felt like, but I can also see as a critic if you're just like, this is just the original movie. Why would I give it a better score? I get that. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I mean, you're really there for one, the nostalgia of it all. Mm -hmm. Two, I mean, you already know what's going to happen in the movie, so you're not there to like be shocked. Like I said, the 30 additional minutes. Who knows what goes on there though? Yeah, I did, I did hear that uh, Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner do still steal the show, but. Right. Uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing Beyonce sing some songs. I'm looking to hear, looking forward to hearing Donald Glover sing some songs. So, mm. I mean, like I said, we'll, we'll, I mean, I'm I'm still leaving it open to open to interpretation. I, I, I'm still pretty excited to see this. Uh, I'm not I'm not fully backing down from my two billion. I still think it's probably gonna rig in a shitload of money because we've seen bad movies make a shitload of money. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good, good lord. <laughs> yeah, and I mean. <clears throat> Even Batman versus Superman, which I enjoyed, but I know a lot of people didn't like, 
Yeah. I made a lot of fucking money. But I also just remember League didn't so. I remember going to the Batman vs Superman like the uh, this was when I was I was stuck to IMDb scores. I didn't really fuck with Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. and on IMDb it was like a nine point five with like six thousand reviews. Yeah, and I should have known that got that got flooded with a bunch of fanboys. Fuck, because once I like once I saw that movie, that movie's like a sixty at best. You know, mm-hmm. it's a huge problem, especially with comic book movies where people just do that without seeing it. Yeah, so, I mean, why? I also think it, I think it's I think it's an issue with like. A, almost all the fan bases at this point because mm. you have like that whole thing with uh the lady gaga fans when venom and a star is born came out at the same time and they like they flooded the reviews with venom mm. for the user with negative reviews and given venom's not the best movie ever made but mm. you do get some crazy people like that and i want i also wonder too if the the, the beehive for beyonce is going to come out to this and, and flood the audience score and and imdb with pretty high re- high scores when it shouldn't be yeah but i guess i feel like a good example of that too is um the last jedi which i didn't love but like some people just all right, took that movie like to task dude they were like spamming it with terrible reviews and i don't know it's like a six out of ten it's not like a whatever it had like a 20 on the audience review so i don't know yeah. people are crazy yeah last Jedi is a, a movie that was very it was the reviews are all over the place. It mm. was some people thought it was the best Star Wars movie since Empire Strikes Back. Some people thought it was the worst one. Yeah, which is also I feel equally ridiculous to take that stance. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we ended up falling probably somewhere right in the middle. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. There were some really great scenes, but I didn't love the movie overall. But Dylan, um, what is our next topic? I know that there was <clears throat> something we wanted to get into before we talked about the main thing. Yeah, so I mean, speaking of Star Wars and speaking of fuck faces, <laughs> uh, the... I, I didn't know how to like transition that well. My apologies, but uh, I think speaking of fuck faces is very eloquent in this situation. Yeah, so our boys David Benioff and DB Weiss or whatever the fuck his name is, uh, the guys did... who we actually praised uh, about a year ago when we heard they were going to get a Star Wars trilogy. Oh yeah, I was all about it. Uh, obviously. We... If you listen to the pod with uh, we talked about the Game of Thrones uh, finale, um, we weren't we aren't too big of fans of Benioff and Weiss and how they handled the final show. And I purposely think that they just wanted to get the fuck out of there, didn't really care how it ended, and just wanted to get onto their Star Wars stuff rather than handing it off to someone else. And a lot of stories have come out now how the cast really wasn't a fan of the ending. Uh, Miguel Sapochnik came out and basically said that there were. They were dictators on the set during uh, the Battle of Winterfell, which which probably should have been the, the the biggest battle episode of the entire show, and like half of us couldn't even see it. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah, I guess Sapochnik questioned like why they weren't killing off more people uh, of, of with bigger names in that episode mm-hmm. than they ended up doing it, and I guess they basically told him like fuck off and just shoot it. Uh, like, so yeah, okay. it turns out they're uh, they're reckoning they're. Uh, their crucifixion was going to end up being comic con where they're going to just end up getting flooded with booze and, mm. and questions about why they completely just fucked over the final season of game of Thrones. And it turns out like, I think the, the day before or their, their comic con, their panels actually scheduled for tomorrow and they ended up dropping out today. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um, cause when I heard they were going, I was like, okay, a little bit of respect there. Cause I, you have to know what they're in for. But then to drop out the day before, it's like, okay, I don't have any respect for you guys at all anymore. Yeah. Like, what is I mean, this? Yeah. The only thing I think, the only thing I think it benefits is like, is the, the actors that are going to be there on that panel, which I, I think it's, uh, Maisie Williams, uh, Isaac Hempstead, Wright, Uh, the guy that plays Grey Worm, it's, uh, John Bradwell, Bradley, who played Samuel, mm-hmm. uh, Jamie Lannister. Uh, actually, I'm surprised John Stone's not on that. Uh, so I guess it kind of leaves it open to them where they're because I, I don't think they'll be booed because obviously they oh no crazy they're all that. awesome still but fuck that man like it was it was pretty well publicized that this was going to be them finally having to answer for that shit because they've basically been out of the public eye since mm-hmm. since that show aired and like I said I don't think they give a fuck I I, I think that they probably they probably get off and enjoy this mm-hmm. and I I really think that they're just on to their Star Wars thing and I, honestly. I really hope their Star Wars thing sucks. I'm not even rooting for like for like a good movie. I, I'm rooting, and they have a trilogy, dude. A trilogy. Yeah. 
like they, they are they are going to be the after uh, Rise of Skywalker they are going to be the next three Star Wars movies we have to see and I, I keep right. hearing people say like oh man like it's going to be their own content like 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 this should be good and then I mm-hmm. see other people on the other side seeing like oh like you know when they're adapting stuff that's when they're at their best I'm like okay what are they adapting because half of the Star Wars extended universe is no longer canon mm-hmm. so I don't know what they're adapting from that and I, I think the longest running rumor was that they were going to be doing Knights of the Old Republic right but I don't think that's confirmed that that's what they're doing because mm-hmm. uh, oh excuse me uh, so I, I don't know I don't really have the I, I guess we'll see because I, I personally, I, I think their true cause was shown once George R. R. Martin left that show and they were really away from the books, obviously, because their two weakest seasons were the final two seasons, which were the furthest away from the book. So, yeah. I don't know, man. It's It, it sucks, because I was really curious. I think they, they really deserve to be booed. They deserve to at least answer questions about why they did some of the decisions they did with, with the final season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at this point, I don't know if we'll ever really... We'll get it, like, 10 years down the road. When so they do like an entertainment weekly article, or some shit like that, but it sucks. It it sucks that they suck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I I used to be on the other end of this argument where before this final season, I said that George R. R. Martin was to blame because I I don't think I didn't think that they signed up to write fan fiction for the final two seasons. Mm-hmm. And now I turns out I think George R. R. Martin was probably like, fuck them. Like like they want to take they want to take my story and like run with it by themselves. Mm-hmm. And this is just me like guessing. And that's why he left. And he also probably wanted to finish his books, quote unquote. But obviously, we haven't got that yet. Mm-hmm. It's been eight years since the last book came out. The last book came out right before season one aired, so right. it's been quite some time. So, like, he—I guess—if you're a fan of the books over the shows, you obviously want some some answers from George R. R. Martin. But uh, now I'm obviously on the other side, where I say fuck Weiss and fuck Benny off, and mm-hmm. it's uh, part of me. I don't think it'll happen at this point because they're too close, and I think they're getting ready to start casting the the, the movies. But I kind of hope they end up getting pulled from Star Wars, mm-hmm. which won't happen. Right. But... I mean, Star Wars has had certainly a tumultuous um, experience with. I think the Ryan Johnson trilogy got canned. Is that right? Um, As, something, yeah, because they're they're next. They are they're confirmed that the next three movies after Rise of Skywalker. I think their first movie is uh, 2021, maybe, or maybe 2022. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think Ryan Johnson might be doing a show now on, like, the, the Disney stream thing for Star Wars. I could be wrong, though. I mean, that could be good. I mean, obviously, like I said, I didn't love Last Jedi, but I am a really, really big fan of Ryan Johnson's other works. Um, Brick, for example, is one of my favorite movies of all time and I really liked Looper as well as well as his directing efforts on Breaking Bad so you know I'm not against Ryan Johnson still having a hand in Star Wars stuff going forward no he's kind of I kind of view him on the other side of the argument that I where like Benioff and Weiss uh, need something to adapt I think he'd be better Ryan Johnson would be better at not having to adapt something which mm-hmm. is tough because I, I, I think a lot of the director decisions he made in that movie like the shot of the throne room mm-hmm. that, that's one of the, my favorite shots in Star Wars when uh, when she gets Ray gets the, the lightsaber back and mm-hmm. they all fight the red troopers I thought that was awesome yeah I just and watched that of, the other day on YouTube and I was like yeah this still is dope it's one of my favorite shots in all of Star Wars so mm-hmm. I think I think he's definitely talented I'm not, I, like obviously like as we said like three times already we weren't that big of fans of, of Last Jedi but mm-hmm. I, I think given his own stuff, he'd probably really fly with it. Cause I think that's kind of what he tried to do with this too, was make yeah. a different Star Wars movie. And he sure did, but. Oh, well, it's uh, hard too. Cause he was building off of all these that's kinda, things that Abrams just set up that this, he wasn't interested in this day and age too, because like that, uh, George Lucas only directed, I think a new hope. And I think Empire right. Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, he wrote, but didn't direct. And then obviously he directed the prequels. prequels yeah. But I think that he was also pretty much like he wasn't the director, but he was also like he was kind of the director with those movies. Mm-hmm. But this one, like JJ, JJ was still a producer, and they obviously go off. I really don't think that they went off his storyline though. Like no. I really don't. I really find it very hard to believe that the last Jedi was the direction they want to take. But I don't know. We're we're getting too far off track. I, I digress. We're getting yeah. too off track. No, I mean. It's, I mean, it still kind of has to do with uh, our main topic of the day if we're talking about Star Wars, right? Yeah, I, got, Seven, I guess. Essentially the uh, the original trilogy. So, yeah, the at the end of the day, um, uh, I think you're right. I think this is better for the actors. Because now can, instead of being like a pretty negative experience, 
now it can just be a celebration of the actors at Comic-Con. Yeah. That's the other big thing, too. This is pretty much the, the Game of Thrones final farewell. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this Comic-Con is obviously Comic-Con San Diego is the biggest, the biggest on, the, on, the, mm -hmm. on the world. So this is like a night going to be a nice goodbye to them. And yeah, I feel better for the actors. They won't have to deal with them. Those shitheads. And like, like I said, for a lot of what I read and understand, a lot of the actors and the crew aren't too happy with that. So. Right. Yeah. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get on to something that was good. Let's get on to a good TV show. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm really excited to talk about this. Yeah. This is, uh, this is building up to it. Stranger things, stranger things three. You've yes. both seen it. And I'm assuming if you're listening here, you've seen it too. So we're, we're doing a full spoiler Stranger Things review starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, so um, Hopper dies maybe. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's obviously the biggest takeaway from this season. I, I think that his his quote-unquote death is the most obvious he's not dead in right. the entire world. Right, right. He, and there's a lot of debate too with, with the post credit scene when they're in – some Russian facility that they mentioned the American and all that. When mm -hmm. we finally see the Demi Gorgon there, there's two rumors. Basically it's obviously Hopper who I, I think that's who it's going to be. And it also could be Dr. Brenner, mm -hmm. which sure. Uh, if they want to introduce that, uh, that uh, Hopper's not dead. I, there's no way. Cause it, he also, if he is dead, then they broke like the biggest Cardinal Cardinal, bleh, Cardinal sin on, on TV, which you can't, you can't have a major character die like off screen. He essentially died off screen mm -hmm. in this. Uh, it not not to the effect where like he wasn't shown the entire episode. They're like, oh, he's dead. It was like when they showed the guys earlier disintegrate. They yeah. did not show him here. They kind of they cut away and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, he's not dead. It, it's the most obvious uh, misdirection ever. And they, I don't know if you caught it at the very end where he was reading the letter, which the letter was touching. They got mm -hmm. crying, bawling my eyes out. Right, the very, right. Very end is he says, you know, leave the leave the door open for your dad three inches, mm -hmm. and then it it cuts to. The, the the old scientist guy that was in season two looking at the wall and there's there was still a small crack in the mm -hmm. wall so yeah i think you pretty obviously looked at that and was like well either i'm gonna fucking die or can take my chances it, jump in well there. i i think he fully expected to die mm -hmm. uh my, i think the theory i like the most is that he's in he's in the upside down right yeah that's what the I mean. one that I'm, yeah. I'm running with i i think that they could do two things i think that it could be Dr. Brenner in Russia, which could be like a, another misdirection. Mm -hmm. And then he could be in the upside down, which I think, it, which I personally think is the most likely thing is that he's in the upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I guess if you want to get on to the, uh, that's obviously the biggest thing yeah. from the season, Hopper's death. Uh, Cause uh, Hopper, uh, I think David Harbors is his, his name. Awesome. Uh, yeah, he, he's, 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 he's so good. And he's, he's probably my favorite character in that show. Mm -hmm. And he, he just plays that role perfectly. I, it, I, so it's kind of also like, I'm, maybe I'm in denial. I really hope he's not dead, but I truly don't think he is. I think it'd be hard because he's such like a important part of the show, you know? Yep. Like yep. Obviously, Eleven um, is the main character. Mike was definitely for the first season, but I think Eleven's kind of moved to the central focus of their storylines now. Yeah, but, well, I... Oh, so no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just said, like, as far as the adult storylines, it tends to be Hopper being the one that we're following, you know? I was going to say, I thought this season did a really good job taking a whole bunch of separate storylines and eventually intersecting them at the end. And Because most of our characters, unless you were in separate groups the entire season, we had mm -hmm. we had the Scoops Ahoy group, which was my personal yeah, favorite. Scoops Troops. That that whole storyline was yep. by far my favorite of the, of, the, of the season. We had Hopper. Uh, Joyce and uh, I forgot the other dude's name. Um, Mur Murray, Murray, and, and the Russian guy, the guy that we we all fell in love with. Oh, Lexi, Lexi. Um, that storyline was great. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say the kids was uh, was the most focused one. Mm -hmm. Probably a little underwhelming to me. The one I didn't really care for the most was Nancy and Jonathan. Uh, I guess it was necessary for the for the story as a whole, but I didn't mm -hmm. really. That's probably my least favorite storyline. Yeah, I, um, it had a lot of overlap with the kids' storyline in terms of the information we were learning, and some of the stuff we were learning, they weren't even learning like when their ad explodes, and yep. we see that, but they didn't see that, you know. Yep. So yeah, it's hard, you know. It, it, and they're just, they're like the most bland characters to me, also, mm -hmm. but. You can't just you can't just get them out of the show. You need them in there. But yeah, I mean the the season as a whole, I liked it a lot more than season two, and I I kind of like season two. But mm -hmm. this season is right up there with season one to me. But season one is it's it's in its own class. Season one was just so good. It was just so like out of nowhere when it came out. Mm 
uh, obviously this this has a huge following now. Mm-hmm. And, but this this season really it delivered because you, know, you always with this show particularly. I'm getting a little nervous that the whole monster and the upside down, the Demi, especially now that Demi Gorgon's back, mm-hmm. I'm a little worried that whole storyline is going to eventually get a little, a little uh, used up. Mm-hmm. And I think that we're approaching that. I also don't think that this show is going to go more than two seasons more. It can, my, yeah. th- I, I have a feeling the next season could be the last season, honestly. I'd kind of prefer it. And a lot of that depends too. Who knows how long it's going to be till we get it. Right. Um, but, yeah, I love this season a lot. I'd probably give it like a solid, like, probably like a 90, 92. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd probably give the first season like a 97. And I'd probably give the second one maybe like an 85 around that area. Mm-hmm. So it's I think the show as a whole is, is pretty fucking certified fresh. I, I, lo- I know a lot of people weren't, I should say a lot. Season two was very mixed, I'd say. But season three <laughs> delivered. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, season two, hard to follow up. Um, such a great season. But, uh, yeah, I think this season is really – they mastered the art of, like, ha- having the plot revolve around smaller, you know, groups and yep. putting interesting characters together. Like, Erica was, I think, in season two, right? Like, a yep. small part, and she was great in this season. And then um, we have the new character whose name escapes me at the moment, um, part of the Scoops troop. Robin. Robin, Robin, yes. Yeah, that is uh, Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke's uh, daughter. Oh, that's that's cool. She was great, yes. I felt. And, she uh, was. That's the first thing I've ever seen her in, too. Me, yeah, me too. I think uh, her chemistry with the actor who plays Steve was great. And obviously Dustin and Steve the were so good together in season two that you can't not have them together in this one. And so the four of those characters together, just like you said, made – the most compelling storyline. And obviously like a lot of dramatic stuff is happening too. They're infiltrating a bunker and then, you know, kidnapped. But, uh, yeah, I think they did a really good job with that. I think L, you know, kind of mastering her powers, but then kind of overexerting herself and losing them was interesting. That was another thing I was really worried about too, is that, uh, 11 is basically kind of like a broken character at this point. Like, yeah. in a video game, she would kind of be, like, unbeatable. Because the second she gets loud and screams, at least as we saw, she rips apart, mm-hmm. like, the toughest monster they face. So right. I, I thought her, like, kind of losing her powers was pretty smart mm-hmm. because that oh, so that whole final battle was pretty much, like, unneeded. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like that. There's, it kind of, like, it stems back to my, my biggest fear is that eventually this the whole monster and Eleven and the storyline is going to get pretty worn out quickly. But they've kind of they found a way to save it this season with her losing her powers and, like, the whole team is trying to work together to defeat uh, the, uh, the 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 mind flayer. Yeah, the, it definitely was kind of like okay. Yeah, every time something gets too sticky, L just like trumps you know what's happening and saves the day, and that's fine. But yeah, you're right. They definitely needed to do something to nerf her, if you will, to steal a video game term. I uh. One thing I kind of wonder about too with her is like, what happens to all the rest of those the super powered kids? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> they introduced nine last season and everyone hated it, so they were like, never mind. It's kind of like, but you, it's almost like you can introduce them and then just take them out. Like, mm. the, there's a bunch of other kids, or at least two, two, one other kid we know about in the world that's pretty much exactly like L, mm. and to have her written them in there and then take them out, like probably could have used their help in this season. I thought for sure we were going to see them maybe even in the post credit scene. Yeah. Well, we I thought nine would show up at some point at least, but no, yep. no, I think, I think the backlash was so harsh on that storyline that they were just like, forget it. This didn't happen. Episode seven of season probably. two didn't happen. Could be. Yeah. I mean, there was enough time in between where people maybe even like forgot about it. Yeah, uh, especially not even bringing up in this season. It's well, what did what did you think about? I didn't hate that episode. I know a lot I didn't of people hate, really fucking. I didn't it, hate though. it. It wasn't. It what? It's probably my least favorite out of all of them. I didn't mm. hate it though. Like it's uh, it still was decent TV. But kind of my point though, you can't just introduce them and then take them away and like never go back to it. It makes it it makes it kind of like worse. Yeah, I don't know if it's just conjecture, but I remember hearing that that was like a backdoor pilot to a spinoff they wanted to make with those characters, but they makes obviously sense, I guess. canned that. That's not <laughs> happening. It's kind of something I really hope they, they do in with the, the next season too. And I think they might now with, with 
the buyers in 11 kind of moving out of Hawkins is that they, they take it other elsewhere other than Hawkins. And I think now maybe we'll get some, some seed in Russia. Uh, we'll get wherever they're going, wherever mm-hmm. Joyce and, and the kids are going. Um, I think if my, if my assumption is that he's in the upside down is correct. I think we'll, we'll see the upside down again mm-hmm. with, with Harp with Hopper. Um, yeah, I mean this this season was very very good. Uh, it's a classic, it's a classic like '80s American movie where they're fighting the Russians and it's, it's sci-fi. Yep. It's kind of like it's like it a perfect really, mix. It really is, yeah. We got a friggin' Terminator. Like I was to say, we have we have basically a Terminator in the, in this movie, in this show. It was uh, it was great. It was a really fun watch. Mm-hmm. It, it was the first show I've binged that quickly uh, in, in quite some time. Because usually I'll. I'll Especially because I'm on a schedule with a with a significant other, but mm. you, when you get on that schedule and you just knock three out a day, it, it it's it's awesome. While also at the same time, I'm like fuck, like it's over now. So, yeah, I did I did kind of like the eight episodes. I was like, this is good. This is like manageable, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's as a whole. Like, I already fucking said this. So I'm not even going to go into as a whole. Uh, it's it's like if season one's an A plus, this is this is right there like an A. Like it was just a really fun season. Like mm. I said. All the separate stories really worked well, and particularly the Scoops Ahoy stuff. I can't, I can't reiterate how much I, I, I really enjoyed that storyline. Mm. Like you said, the chemistry between Robin and Steve was flawless. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. And the reveal at the end yep. that she's that she's uh, that she's that she's a lesbian was mm. really out of nowhere, but also worked really really well. That it's not like the typical where this guy who was a dickhead in high school and this girl who was kind of an outcast. Right. You know, he kind of sees his wrong ways and he wins her over. I like mm. that they didn't, it, it wasn't cliche like that. I like that they mixed it up. And it, it yeah, was, and I like it's like now they're just like, you know, best friends, you know? Yeah. No, it was, it, and I, I really hope that she's in next season because mm. they're, that whole storyline, their chemistry, like you said, it was, it was, it was great. It was perfect. That, that, them like figuring out basically without any superpowers at all, the whole, the whole Russian, uh, call, mm-hmm. call signs, I guess you want to call them that. Yep. And figuring out that it's in the mall, uh, it was it worked. Also, like, where the fuck, where, how far on the ground are they? That, like, where, where does that lead to? Because remember in the beginning, the guy gets in like a helicopter in like the mountains. Yeah. Like, where, where the fuck was that? Where does that I, tunnel go? I don't Is that know. like a portal? I don't know. I, it's a little confusing, certainly from that. And then like, when they find Alexi under the farm, it's like, how far away is that from the mall? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's hard. We need we need a map. We need them to release like a layout of the underground bunker. And I guess it's something like it's not it doesn't it doesn't make it break the show for you, but it is kind of like uh, like I don't fully understand how that's work because in the opening scene when that guy leaves the bunker, he literally he's, it looks like he's in like the Rocky Mountains mm. or like some somewhere somewhere in Russia like that. That was not Hawkins. No, no. I think I think the opening scene may have been Russia, and then them being like, "Oh, we can't." open this gate here so we need to go to hawkins yeah okay do you think that's possible it could be that because that could be where the mayor came into yeah Mm -hmm. and why they built the mall and all that um but i I mean i liked i liked it a lot i think that like you said having them kind of move away from hawkins because it's always tough um with shows where it's like all this crazy stuff is happening here you know Yep. to the same characters every time. Like, it's not like these are people who, you know, they're not like they're government agents who are going to places to investigate specific things. It's just like they're just a random group of people who just keep getting caught up in these situations. So how many times can you do that in a row without it becoming completely stale, you know? Yeah, I mean, and also I think that's why I do. I, I think that next season will be. The, I kind of like almost hope next season's the last because it's mm. like we saw with Game of Thrones. Like you don't you don't want to see one of your favorite shows end poorly, right? Because it it, it kind of spoils the whole thing. And I think they, they can really. And the other thing is too is all these kids are growing really really quickly. Yeah, and they've already kind of. I'm glad that they 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 directly mentioned it in this in the show too. Like, what did you think we we're gonna be kids forever? Or like yeah. playing D D and all that mm. shit. Like. No, we grew up, and like I, I like that they address that because that's quite literally what's happening in real yeah. life. And not only and that, but of course, this happens with any like talented children actors. They get roles in like other stuff, like it and uh, the new Godzilla. And it's like at a certain point, are they gonna stay? You know. And Harry, something like Harry Potter was the only situation when that would work perfectly because it was literally school year by school year. Yeah. And literally in real life, you, when school year by school year, you're obviously getting older and you're changing. Mm-hmm. Where this, I think there's maybe like three years that have gone by 
And I guess like in real life, it's been, I don't know, like, uh, like, that's uh, four or five. 2015, yeah. So four. 2015, so yep. it's been about four, and it'll probably be about five or, or six whenever the next season comes out. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I really hope they end on a high note. I don't want them to stretch us in the five, because like I said, uh, my biggest fear, and I, I am very, very worried about it, is this whole storyline is eventually going to get very stale mm. and very used up. And and that's when I'm going to be like, all right, well, like, great, another season. Like, part of my worry with them introducing the Demigorgon again mm. is great. Another season, they're going to introduce the Demigorgon. They're going to fight the Demigorgon again. Awesome. Yeah. I see the upside. It's like, okay, but this time it's bigger, so. Yeah, it's like, oh, Eleven doesn't have powers. I'm like, oh, fucking great. Yeah. So they're all going to die. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I want to touch on. So what do you think of Billy as um, the kind of bad guy this season? And then, you know, having a little bit of redemption at the end, obviously sacrificing himself to save Al. What, like, I felt like yeah, a lot did, of people thought he, his character. Did he sacrifice himself, though? Yeah, like, I think. The, the Mind Flayer just, like, fucked him up. And then the Mind Flayer just moved on to the next one. Well, the Mind Flayer was, like, trying to, um get al and he grabbed it with his hands right yeah and i he guess. screamed no and then he got like punctured but 10 different tentacles very very yeah. anime I uh was... i i mean i i liked billy i liked that whole thing i the, the, the way they set it up at the end of the first episode and into the second one was really creepy mm. with him getting into the car accident and then him getting dragged down and into like the uh the 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 cellar of that place and then him possessing the other people and like the girl yeah. killing her parents and all that it was creepy very invasion of the body snatchers um yeah I, 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 as a whole i liked it i'm glad that i'm glad that you know he got a sort of a redemption i guess yeah uh, i mean you know, a one said. second redemption and then you know 11 going into like his life like i got he was a dick and you know he was a bully, but they also made it sound like this kid was like was had a terrible upbringing, mm. a terrible. And his dad was kind of a dick too, I guess. Oh yeah, he like abu- remember in season two he like hits him. Yeah, and, like yeah, it's true. not good. Like, that whole thing with the beach thing was nice. It was mm. touching. Um, shout out moms, you know. Right. Yeah, I get I get that whole point. Yeah, it was. But obviously the the end, the real bad guy was the mind flare, and Billy was just uh was a was a henchman at that point, mm. but. I mean, he played the bad guy role well. That guy, that guy's a pretty good actor. Power Rangers. Yeah, Power I like, Rangers I like him a lot uh, as Jason. I really hope that uh, obviously they sold the rights to a new company. Um, Saban sold it to Hasbro, I think. So I, I hope yeah. they're still gonna stick with him. I thought he was a really good Red Ranger in that movie. So I also I didn't realize he's uh, he's um, he's Australian. Yeah, oh my god, I was watching a YouTube video with him the other day, and like, I was like, wait, his real voice isn't that? Yeah, he's so crazy. Yeah, Uh, yeah, no, he was fine. Like I said, in in the end, the real bad guy was was the Russians and the Mind Flayer, but he was a very good uh, main henchman. Mm -hmm. You know, he he, he, obviously, his uh, stepsister having to deal with the dilemma of, uh, you know, whether to kill him or not, and he's Mind Flayer, and just kind of splitting her up because she's not not as broken as he is. Mm Uh, it was good, but it's the uh, same thing. I'm glad his storylines moved on, and like, oh, he's a dick. Mm-hmm. And I'm also, I'm also glad that Mike's mom didn't cheat on, didn't cheat on uh, th- their dad with him. I'm right? Glad that they didn't yeah, I'm glad that. that didn't happen too, because that was that was that was that was, was a lot. family fall apart. <laughs> I mean, obviously Billy didn't care, but for us, we didn't want to see that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's season three. You know, you know, uh, it was great. It's it's something I'll probably watch one more time for the next season comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I, uh, it's not, it still doesn't reach season one level for me. Like season one's an A plus. I think I put this in the A or A minus, whatever I said, it's very good, better than season two. It, it's there. They addressed them getting older very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Russian American thing. It's, it's a very, it's a very American type thing, which the eighties were American. With uh, obviously the Cold War going on, that that mm-hmm. it all worked really well. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with uh, with the next. I also wonder if, if they go into a time jump. You know, that's possible that, too. Yeah, to uh, try to explain it, the aging a little bit. They're only in '85, so I doubt they're going to time jump like into the '90s, which would be pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, I gotta assume, yeah, there's going to be at least a year, two years, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And also, like another thing, I want to bring up: why the fuck did Jonathan go with his his mother and his brother? The dude's like like 20. <laughs> I know. I, that's you know, like, like a full-time job. That's hard too. It's like uh, 
He said like, oh, 17 years of my life. And I'm like, you're only 17. What? That's, that's a fucking lie. He just graduated high school. Right. Yeah. I don't know. They're at least a year out of high school. Yeah. No, fuck that. Yeah. Like, dude, you have a girlfriend that you've been with for like a year, two years. Mm-hmm. Like, you're leaving her behind with Steve. Bad move, brother. Bad move. <laughs> Steve's going to have to get back in there, you know? He's, he's got his uh, mojo back. He beat someone up this season. He got beat up a lot, just like every season, but. Sure did. Um, it's almost become like a running joke, a running that, theme in this, but. That's the bathroom scene that we talked about with the reveal for uh, Robin. That was probably one of my favorite scenes of Stranger Things. That was really yeah. well shot. Really uh, well written. Uh, the whole her telling the story of um, of uh, the girl in uh, in in the class, and then mm-hmm. her finally saying like, "Oh, like why was she looking at you instead of me?" Yeah. Like why? Can't... It was just that was so well written and so well done. It was. Mm-hmm. It's it's suiting too. You know, it's 2019. Uh, these these type mm-hmm. of stories deserve a little more uh, to to get introduced into entertainment. You know, people right. can start becoming. Uh, uh, interested in uh people of the same sex mm-hmm. uh, you know just in 2010 right so. exactly it's cool to see this like i said that i'm glad i'm glad they didn't do the cliche of her of him being like you know what i'm an asshole but i've grown up and you know we can date now i'm glad they didn't mm-hmm. do that it was a night it was a nice little monkey wrench they threw in there yeah. it worked really well and i think you know it, it's still served it's like yeah i was an asshole but now we can be friends like you know yeah like you yeah. didn't they don't have to date for him to have a redemption arc you know good guy steve no one's really done a 180 in a show for me one steve like I, you like steve at the end of season one but the pretty much majority of season one you think he's an asshole mm-hmm. uh, and you know he kind of is an asshole we all knew that asshole in high school yep. season two he obviously turned into the uh, soccer mom we all know him <laughs> of now right and yeah also can't forget him like you said him and dustin's uh, chemistry D- dustin deserves better friends than his friends in my opinion i think steve fits that fits yeah. that role take him so, for granted a little we're not even like 11 to like to like look and see where dustin is as, as hawkins is literally falling apart <laughs> like just to go in go into the to the dark whatever the fuck you want to call it mm-hmm. and see where he is she very easily could have did that mm-hmm. and like oh he's stuck in a bunker but no mm-hmm. they didn't because they were too worried about other shit and mm-hmm. like spying on each other and all that right. so uh yeah i mean i guess we also have to address the um never-ending story mm-hmm. scene love it adorable yeah, it's scene. funny it's really real adorable. I actually saw a video after. I guess the kid that plays Dustin Gate Matarazzo mm. had a um had a background in like in theater and musical theater. Right. So like I guess that was actually him singing. Um oh, that's great. But I've seen that I've seen that scene so many times now. It's an adorable scene. It's very funny also. I love I love I love when they pan to the car when he starts singing and they have the monster running behind them <laughs> as it's playing on the radio and then it cuts to Hopper and mm. Murray and all of them and the devil is it's hilarious. It's yeah, that's that's the stuff I'm here to see. That that was very very funny. Yeah, I think um, a great payoff with uh, everyone doubting Susie existing, and then nope, she's real. Yeah, I mean, it's very it's typical. Susie like, oh, she the doesn't world. go to the school. Yeah, I think a lot of people. I hate that debate too. The whole debate that you know, if she didn't if she didn't sing, Hopper would still be alive, even though he still is alive. I I I think without them, there without her, they were all dead. Yeah, the whole world would have been dead. Like, fuck, she she said it like Dusty. You should. Uh, Dusty Bun, you should you should know this. You know what yeah. are you got? What are you doing? Or Murray? Maybe Dusty was a fucking idiot. The ball. Yeah, that too. But where's all the blame on that? Maybe they're the ones that killed Hopper. Yeah, Maybe and Murray getting him. Alexi killed too. Mm-hmm. Trying to show him a good American time. Yeah. So. Yep. Agree. And and, and his wife's name is Christina. Mm-hmm. Get it right. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a the other the other guy's reference. One of my favorite right. movies, and he, his wife is Christina in that. Yeah, I know the other guys. Really great movie, by the way. If you haven't seen it, you gotta check it out. Yes, that's that's a good plug, Brian. Yeah. Good plug. Um, yeah, I think uh, Murray gets off a little light online. I see, I see a good amount of people kind of, kind of giving Susie shit um, for that, like you said. But uh, Murray, scotch free. Everyone loves Murray. I mean, he is great. He's yeah. he's great and funny, but he did get Alexi killed, in my opinion. Did Alexi gone but never forgotten? No, he's a legend in the streets. I saw I did an AMA on Reddit too. I want to go and read that. The actor uh, did an AMA about his experience. I saw. I did read it. It's very generic. He's like, uh, how, like, 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 what's wrong with strawberry? He's like, he's like, it sucks. <laughs> it's like his response, and it's like, fair enough. Like, how did you? It's like, how did you feel about getting killed? He's like, oh, you know, sucked. Also, <laughs> it sucks. 
Which, like, it's uh, it's not, playing. It's not actually, great. It's really, he actually is Russian. And, like, he knows pure Russian, so like he, he could also have like a very Russian uh, mindset. Also, mm. you know, oh, oh, it's cold. It's very cold. It right. sucks. Right. Um, all right, man. That's Stranger Things. Yeah, I mean, it's we've all seen it. We're not going to run down the entire the entire yeah, season. Not, you know, not, we, we loved it. Um, I would say as as a whole, it's I think it's being praised widely as being pretty loved. I've mm. seen some people say it's better than season one. A hard disagree, but season one is is like textbook TV for me. But yeah, uh, yeah, very good for me. It goes obviously one, three, two, and yeah, I'm I'm yeah. there as well. I think season one was such a phenomenon; it can't really be touched, like you said. And uh, yeah, nine out of ten for me. Let's go, guys! If you have a Netflix account, why aren't you watching Stranger Things? And if you have a Netflix account and you haven't watched Stranger Things, but you're at the end of this video, what what is happening? Correct. What that, guy you... in the, that guy in the motorcycle again. It's like every time. God damn it. Can't stop. All right. Yeah. So to, to recap, Gilbert Godfrey, we're going to get Gilbert Godfrey to mm-hmm. say something. 150 bucks. I'd happily pay that. Yeah. Gilbert Godfrey, we're going to open the Venmo. We can get everything. Gilbert Godfrey, we can get him to say something. Yeah. God, welcome to Wicked Good Everything. Yeah. And if, if we don't, we just clip that right there. And Correct. Just spats yeah. it off. It's wow, Gilbert, Gilbert Godfrey. Godfrey. Wow, so that's awesome. Ah, th- thanks. Thanks, Gilbert. Uh, also, new name for the show, no longer Brian and Dylan Takes on the World, is now The Reviewers. For now. Uh, so we'll tell see. all your friends. Yeah, for now. <laughs> tell all your friends to subscribe. And if and the- our, our, <laughs> uh, Brian's very well-made clip art uh, uh, logo. Shut up, Brian. Good uh, job. Yeah, so, also, uh, shut up, Brian Wong. Brian Wong probably won't be listening to this uh, for a week or two because he just started sharing things today as we're talking. But shout oh, out, right. Brian Wong. Shout out, Brian Wong. Uh, catch up and then check this out. Just to see if he made it all the way to this point, shout out Scott Bowden, who who I also work with, who who's going to be soon to be your coworker, and uh, shout out Scott Bowden. I know he sometimes listens to this. He always bitches and complains I don't shut him out. So there you oh, go, geez. Scott. Well, Scott, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate also, it. You know, if you're not listening to this, you know, fuck you. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, can't can't co-sign that. Don't know you, Buddy. Scott. But uh... all right, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of the reviewers make sure you check out our new fake nerds updates on the conspiracy theory that may have inspired stranger things that should be good hopefully it's up by the time this is up if not it will be up soon dylan where can they find you online dj clubber lane two b's at twitter.com go and follow him on twitter you can find me at the fake bmar that's b-m-a-r-r of course you can follow the channel on twitter at wg everything on instagram at we could get everything on twitch at twitch.tv Slash Wicked Everything. We haven't streamed much lately, but uh, I hope to change that. Uh, we'll our, we'll uh, see. Our YouTube's only getting bigger. Yeah, YouTube, we're over a thousand subscribers. I think we touched on that last episode too, right? Yep. You're yeah. going to start seeing ads, fuckers. Um, you're getting some, some ads. At some point, certainly. So, having, but uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this. Make sure you share it with your friends, family, enemies. I love whatever. you all. Yes. I love you, and I love you, Brian. I love you all. Love, love you too, Dwayne. Shout out there. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.